God's grace, mercy, and peace be yours for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thanks. Can you uh, turn to page 10 in your bulletin there, the New Testament reading from Acts chapter 2, about uh, 8, 10 lines down. It says, These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only 9 in the morning. Well, it's 11 in the morning. Um... I don't know. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to pick on anybody in particular, but I'm sure that some of you have been around people who are intoxicated. Yes, been around somebody, someone, some people who were drunk. Did you ever think, gee, these guys are drunk? They're going to start speaking in foreign languages. <laughs> Didn't come across that way, did it? It's amazing to me of the ignorance of the people that were there hearing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on that first day of Pentecost. And they didn't understand it, and so they tried to rationalize it by saying, well, they must be drunk. That's why they're speaking in foreign languages. Really? Doesn't work that way, does it? Some of you have been drunk and not spoken in foreign languages. Well, not intelligible foreign languages, anyhow. <laughs> we won't go any specific for you then. But that's the way it is for the people of the world. For people of the world don't understand the things of God. They don't understand the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so they try to rationalize what they can't comprehend. The problem is what they do with their rationalization doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to them, so they make something up that doesn't make sense. Does that make sense to you? talk to you this morning about this Pentecostal power, the power of the Holy Spirit. It was poured out on that first day of Pentecost and is poured out again and again even this day. Now I don't know about you, but on a hot summer day, I like to have a fan running. Anybody have fans in your house still? If nothing else, you have ceiling fans, right? Not maybe a hot summer day, maybe later if it stops raining, it'll get hot and buggy, I don't know. But it's nice to have a fan. <coughs> Turn the fan on. And I think it was Kevin who said yes, I brought my fan club with me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <coughs> Is the fan on? I know. You, you watch me turn it on. <laughs> it in, that's good. It's possible that it wasn't plugged in. I can turn it on. And, yeah. uh, can you see the wind blowing? No, you can't see the wind blowing. But somebody tied these, you know, ribbons on here so that you can see those blowing because of the wind, right? I don't know why they're red either. I wonder what that's all about. I'll let you guys figure that out on your own, okay? Um, what other ways do you know that the fan are on, the fan's on? Some of you can feel it. Probably not over there, but sure. You can hear it. like the Holy Spirit. How many of you have seen the Holy Spirit? How do you know he's working then? Well, we see his work, we see the effect of his work in our lives and in the lives of others. Many churches, ours included, celebrate this special day of Pentecost today. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We heard that story 
proclaimed and read for us again of the apostles gathering around and the, the Spirit is poured out on them. And they start to speak in tongues, in foreign languages. Why? Why did they speak in different languages? Why did they speak in tongues that day? What was needed there? Well, they had to be able to spread the word so that those who were listening, those who were hearing it, could hear it in their own language and understand it that way. If I stand up here and speak Greek, how many of you will understand what I'm saying? Not I, nor you. <laughs> but I speak English because you understand English. The Holy Spirit came upon the apostles so that they could speak in these different languages so the people could hear in their own languages and understand. And what was it that they were speaking? They were speaking of the things of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit doesn't come to glorify Himself. He doesn't point people to Himself. It's not about the Holy Spirit. Even on this day of Pentecost, Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it's still about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit gives the apostles and all believers the ability and the power to speak about Jesus, to point to Him and what He has done on the cross of Calvary. That there He saved you and all people from their sins. All who would believe and are baptized shall be saved. Praise be to God for that. The Holy Spirit comes so they can tell people about Jesus. How about you? Did the Holy Spirit come to you? When? In baptism. In baptism, the Holy Spirit was poured out into you. And what a great reminder today with the rain outside. I know that most of you don't think that that's necessarily a great thing for a Sunday morning, especially those of you who are walking in. Thank you, youth, for helping us with umbrellas as well, those who were out there and helping. Wasn't that nice of them? It's good. But that, that rain, what a wonderful reminder to us that the Holy Spirit has washed us and cleansed us has been poured out into our lives in the waters of holy baptism, where he connected the word of Jesus to the element of water, and he washed you and cleansed you. And a little bit later, you'll come up to the altar, and you'll receive holy communion, as the Holy Spirit connects that word of God to bread and wine, so that you can be empowered by the Holy Spirit again, Strengthened in your faith and the life and salvation and washed and cleansed, forgiven of all your sins. Where does the Holy Spirit work? Through the means of grace. Word and sacrament. The word preached and proclaimed this day, read before you and for you. But also throughout the week as I encourage you again to be in the word. Take time. Make time. Make it a priority to... To open your Bible, to read, to, to do it online as some of you might do if you've got online devotions and things that happen with, with your computers, that's fine too. It's the Word of God and through that the Holy Spirit is poured out again and again and again in your life. One more thing I want to share with you this morning. If you'll turn to pages 3 and 4, Psalm 139 we read earlier as David is, is contemplating this truth of, of God being present everywhere and knowing all things. Many years ago, when I was a youngster, I read this song and it scared me. It scared me to know the truth, that God knows the truth. You know, you can hide some things from some people. You can get away with some things. You know, you can make sure that if you do it right, mom and dad don't know about it, or brother doesn't know about it, or teacher doesn't know about it. 
but somebody knows about it. God knows about it. No matter where you go, where can you go from the presence of God? Where can you go that he doesn't know what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're not doing, or what you're not saying? Is there any place that you can go that he doesn't know? He knows. It's a very heavy law. It shows us our sin very quickly, at least for me, it has. And I grew older, and in studying God's Word more and more, I, I actually find this psalm to be very comforting at this time in my life. Oh, He still knows all of my faults and my sins, my shortcomings, and I still have a couple of them. Checking with the wife to see how many I have. <laughs> Two. Too many. Oh. <laughs> but how marvelous it is to know that even though he knows my sin, he still loves me. He still forgave me of all my sin. And he poured out his Holy Spirit in my life. And he empowers me with his presence. That no matter where I go, God is there with me. His Holy Spirit is with me wherever I go. I can't hide from him. That's okay. I don't want to. Because you see, God in the Holy Spirit is an advocate. Where did we hear that word today? The advocate that Jesus sent for us. What's an advocate? Somebody who what? Supports us. Somebody who helps us. Somebody who's on our side. And you know what? We have an advocate in our God who is with us all the time. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, even when we do things that are wrong, God bless you, Larry, even when we do things that are against his word, God is still there with us. As our advocate, he forgives us and he loves us and he empowers us to do the right thing, to repent and leave the sin behind and to be his child, to be able to do what the apostles were sent to do and what each and every one of us have been sent to do. Now, we don't have to do it in foreign languages. Thanks be to God for that. How many of you know the English language? Somewhat? How many of you have family and friends and neighbors and co-workers and classmates that also know the English language? <laughs> they may speak it a little differently than you do. I understand there's some, some different varieties of that. But they'll understand when you share Jesus Christ with them in their own tongue. Which happens to be your own tongue. The Holy Spirit is with you. God is with you. He is ever present in your life. He is poured out into your life again on this day of Pentecost. And he empowers you to go. As you go out these doors, he's going to go with you. And he empowers you to go and share Jesus Christ, to point others to him. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting.